So we are assuming that everyone has attended our previous webinars, but if you haven't, we're going to assume that you are familiar with scripting and Cobra Show Creator because we're going to be focusing more on the advanced side of things today. And if you were here last week, we went through audio creation and chose songs, which we're going to use tonight to actually script a little show. I do want to mention that the song order that we kind of went through last week was slightly tweaked and you'll kind of find out once Dan starts getting into the scripting. Just like before, we're going to start out with a short PowerPoint going over some housekeeping items and then I'll pass it over to Dan. He's going to spend the majority of the time in show creator. Alrighty. So first off, one second. Right. So first we're going to talk about Cobra's advanced scripting features. There's only a few of them, so it should be quick. The first one is alternate events, and I will go through each of these on their own slides. The next one is the dead man trigger. Then we're going to talk about disable firing. And lastly, simty time code. So the first one is alternate events. So what are alternate events? Basically an alternate event is an event that you specify in your script that you can manually trigger to fill black sky, or if you just want the control of firing something during your show while it's automatically running. We have two different options, basically defined as alternate one and alternate two. In Show Creator, inside of your show settings, you'll see here all of our different script options, and the highlighted ones are alternate one and two. You can specify any button on the ETR2 to be the alternate firing button. So for example, in this case, when I push Q17, it's gonna fire an alternate one button. As I fire it, it'll just sequentially fire through those alternate one buttons, or uh, cues. There are 18 cues per option, so 36 total. Just mention this, but each time you push it, it'll sequentially fire. And if you wanted to assign an alternate within your script, the second image here shows that if you click on the time field, it'll bring up this pop-up and down at the bottom, you'll see two options to make their alternate one or alternate two. And yes, they can also be scripted within your show. So if you want to have something firing during the finale, but you also want to use those as alternate cues in case something ends early, you can do so. If you don't use them, they'll just simply go with your finale. All right, so the next two options we're going to talk about are the dead man and disable firing options. So the dead man can either be a button on the 18R2, or you can use the dead man trigger, which I have one. This plugs into your 18R2, and you have to hold this trigger. So what is a dead man? So the dead man basically requires you, if specified, to either hold the button you specify or the trigger in order for the show to run. If either one of those were not being pushed or held, the show would basically pause. And this is an example also within the show settings and show controls where you can specify that. So you see the top highlighted column there is the dead man button. And if you're using the trigger that I just showed you, you'd type in dead man, or if you wanted to use the button on the remote, for example, Q18, you would type in 18. The next option is disable fire. And so basically this would allow you to push a button and the remote would show no fire on the seven second display. And then when you start your script, the cues wouldn't fire, but the audio would. So basically dry run your show without actually firing anything. Uh, next oh. option is empty time code. Scott is gonna talk about this. Oh sure, and two things on the dead man as well. On the top of that dead man, there's also a button that when you press it is the step button on the 18R2. And then the other button on the top is the alternate one button. So if you get that dead man, it does more than just the lever for the dead man. You also have two additional functions on the top, which is kind of a neat, neat feature. So cool. Now with Simpty, uh, we're, we're going to be doing a full webinar on Simpty later. So I'm not going to cover all the details within this, but I do want to cover enough to give people an understanding of what it is. Uh, even though we do not have Simpty live on our website today, it will be coming out very soon here, I promise, uh, with our 5.1 firmware release, we probably have over a good 100 individuals and customers using Simpty today within our beta program, so it does work quite well. Uh, this, if you don't know what Simpty is, it's basically a, a digital uh, 
feed. Uh, essentially, it's a, it's a feed that's, that comes out of an audio system, right? So basically, you can create an audio file that actually contains data that's within it, which is kind of a weird concept. So if you actually play Simpty into a speaker, it kind of sounds just like, like this type of a noise. So if you've ever been on a shoot site and you hear that often, sometimes because uh, somehow they ended up feeding Simpty into the sound system. And what you do is you can feed that Simpty time code into one or more different systems, right? So you could feed that into Cobra. Uh, you could feed it like an 18R2, for example, that we're talking about here. You could feed it into multiple 18R2s and other different systems, such as other firing systems. You could feed it into DMX systems, all kinds of stuff that's out there. But the purpose of it is to allow multiple systems to synchronize together and fire at the exact same time. With Cobra, we offer two different Simpty timecode options. One of them is timecode one. Uh, it is the most liberal of the options, meaning that if your Simpty timecode is lost or corrupt, your script will continue to fire. Uh, however, Simpty, excuse me, timecode two, if you do have a lost or corrupted timecode signal, the script will automatically pause on your 18 or two. And there's different reasons why you would want to use timecode one or timecode two, depending on your situation, safety, variety of factors, but we do offer both. Uh, time code one is typically the most popular. Uh, both the 18R2, as you'll see in the picture on the right, does have an RCA port for supporting the time code input. And the command center as well does also have a time code input port. Uh, the firmware that this is available on is 5.1 or greater. And you can also use AudioBox uh, even without the SMPTE adapter on the 18R2. It is common for people to use the AudioBox to feed SMPTE into other systems. So if you had another firing system alongside Cobra, uh, you could actually have the audio box feed it and the 18R2 would then fire in synchronization with that separate firing system. And also you can configure your script at the bottom here. It actually shows in column J, row two is where you would actually place that SMPTE argument. Um, if, you do, if you are interested in SMPTE prior to the 5.1 release, absolutely get in contact with us. Uh, and we can help answer any questions that you have. That's it. All righty. Thanks, Scott. You're welcome. There are a few questions that did pop in regarding Dead Man and Simpty. Yes. So question one, if you do not have a Dead Man control and script is running, can you stop script? Yeah. If you simply push arm pause button, it will pause the script. So for example, new remote say arm slash pause. If you just push that again, it will pause. Uh, only eight new 18R2s have SMPTE. Uh, John, the SMPTE well, is available for any 18R2 that Cobra has ever sold. It, it is simply an upgrade kit to the existing unit. You have to uh, have dead man switch or can use the button in the 18R2 or just press the fire button and let it rip. If so, can I halt the script in music mid-show? So I think Joel kind of answered that. Um, you don't have to. So you don't have to use Dead Man on the 18R2 or the physical switch. It is, it is purely an option. Most people don't use either. They just simply press a button on the 18R2 to start the show, and they do not have any Dead Man controls. So it's, it's typically if your show requires it, you know, based on the AHJ or whoever may want to, or your state or country for that matter. <clears throat> All righty. So... The next slide, we're going to kind of talk about our site layouts. We're kind of specifying this ahead of time so that way once we get into the scripting section, you kind of know what we're going to play with. So we already kind of have this planned out. This is our theoretical site layout. So you'll see here that we have four cake or shell positions in the back labeled as technically B1, 2, 3, and 4 here. And then we have four front positions. I'm sorry, we're using four because uh, 500 gram case are traditionally packaged for one. So we figured use four positions and we'll talk a little bit more about multiple positions on the following slide. So we're using five front positions and this is going to allow us to do things such as chases. So those are all labeled as F1, two, three, four, and five. And we're not going to talk too much about equipment needs today. We're going to save that for next week's webinar. We're just going to go all into different types of equipment and so forth. So, I want to mention why we're going to use four back positions even further. So if you're just using one position, you know, your shells are going to go up, they're going to break pretty central right here like this. 
but if you use two positions, you're gonna mirror them and you're gonna cover more sky. Or in our case, we're gonna use four positions and it's gonna cover even more sky, right? Um, same with the fronts. So we're gonna be using five different front positions and this is gonna allow us to do some really cool things. So for example, using comets or mines, you could simply shoot these straight up if you wanted to, or you could do something like angling them from left to right, or again with right to left, um, or get a little more creative and do something like crisscrossing across the fronts, okay? And there's obviously tons of different options you can do here. So if you get super creative, you can do all sorts of crazy different. Um, hey, hey, Joel, maybe try on your mic to keep it. It's just kind of getting a little louder, softer, and muted. Uh, okay. Yeah, not sure how to. No. Um, okay. <laughs> so the next slide is just showing how instead of doing comments for your fronts, you could do something like slice cakes from Spirit 76. So in this case, they have a lot of different options here that kind of do what we just showed you with our comments where they shoot from left to right or right to left, inside out or um, center out. And so you can use these instead of comments. It'll save you cues on the Cobra side of things. However, if you're looking for precision timing, you still might want to use comments because they're going to hit precisely on the beat versus slight um, timing inaccuracies on, on cakes. All right, so then what we talked about with the fronts and the back positions, we're going to talk a little bit about layering where we can take both of these and kind of create levels of effects in your show. So if we did something where we shot, you know, four shells off, then you can shoot some comments here. And we're just kind of mixing everything I just showed you. And you'll see like in this case, you're really creating a layered effect. At this point, I wanna pass it off over to Dan so he can take you into Show Creator and go through um, actually scripting this. Thanks, Joel. All right, hey guys. So, I have uh, done a little bit of tweaking since the last seminar and um, I did a little bit more cutting on the three songs that we had. And I'll just give you a quick overview real quick. So, we lose Dan. I think we lost Dan. Should be a dramatic pause. This is when you drink. <laughs> hey, that good time not... for a poll there, Joel. <laughs> yeah, do yeah I do have tons of polls. So let's do a basic one. And that is how many cues or what's the largest script you've ever created based on number of cues? <clears throat> So it's a question about why would you use alternate one and two for filling black sky as opposed to hitting individual cues prearranged to fill black sky. So basically when a script is already pre-designed and running and we're assuming you have audio, so a cake ends early, you can't really jump ahead because it's gonna jump your audio, right? And so it's already is pre-programmed or pre-arranged. So if something does end early, you just hit the alternate and it'll send up a shell or whatever you want to fill the sky. And that's, uh, someone else mentioned never needing alternate events. That is also one of the benefits of doing multiple positions, right? So in this case, if we have four positions and one of the positions doesn't go, you still have three going. So you don't technically have black sky, so you might not want to fire anything. However, on a slower part of a song, where maybe you're just firing up some nice shells and something doesn't fire, you want to send something up quickly to kind of fill that void, you could. We get Dan back. Um... Good question. Chris, you want to give him a call maybe? See how we're... Uh... Yeah, I will. <clears throat> All right. All right. Oh, okay. That's an interesting result. He's probably still uh, going yeah. on. Just doesn't realize he's gone. No, uh, possibly. Uh, all right. I'm back now. Can you guys hear me? Sure. Yes, Found him. Okay. 
Sorry about that. I don't know what happened there. Um, yeah. A little internet issue. Um, you want to disable it? I'd probably disable your video. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to leave the video off now. And um, yeah, we'll try this again. Okay. Uh, were you guys able to get any of my audio before I cut out? Uh, you cut out pretty quickly. Yeah, we got okay. finished, Joel. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, so I just want to play a little bit of audio here, just make sure you guys can hear it okay. Um, it's coming through. I do want to give you a heads up. Uh, we noticed some of the audio is lagging just a little bit behind the video. So the, throughout the seminar, if it looks like the cues are a little bit misaligned, it's probably just the stream. Uh, but let's give it a shot here and see if you guys can pick it up. No. No audio. All right. Let me get this one more time. Yeah, when you present, check that little uh, box. Okay. 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 Yep. All right. It's pretty loud, so if you want to, you could probably reduce the volume just a little bit if you want to. Yeah, we'll turn that down. That's better. All right, that's coming. That's coming through. Okay, for you guys. Uh, a little bit loud, but okay. But it looks like we've got some people who want that, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, so, do a little bit of setup here real quick. So, to get things started, um, you'll notice the beginning of the song here starts out, I don't have anything scripted in yet. So that's the first task to get going is to script in the, how we're gonna start the show. So, play that a little bit. Starts out real soft. Um, right here, I'm thinking, we're gonna go ahead and start dropping some fireworks in. Uh, probably start out with some strobes, just kind of get things going a little bit in the field, set the set the atmosphere. Uh, so to do that, I'm gonna be using uh, some of the keyboard shortcuts. Um, one of them is to add a cue is Alt A. So put Alt A, and you'll see it's adding up here some spaces to put cues in. Um, for this, I'm gonna flip back to my shoot site. So I've got four or five positions in the front and four in the back. So let's go ahead and put, uh, let's put a strobe at every single spot in the field. So there I've added uh, nine positions in there this time. And I'm gonna select them all using shift and this first column here on the left, you can select different ones with that. So one through nine, shift, hold, now I have them all selected. In this right pane over here, I'm gonna look for, what do I wanna put in there? We're gonna do maybe red strobe. So type in red strobe, bam, red strobe with Emacs 30 seconds. I'm gonna hit the insert there, and you'll see it automatically adds the uh, duration igniter pre-fire lift time, but the position and angle is still left blank. So we gotta go through and fill that in. So to do that, we're gonna do, I'm just gonna type in here, E1, E2, E3, E4 for the four back positions. And then we're gonna do F1, F2, F3, or an F5. Angle, these are just strobes, so they're gonna leave that blank. Um, I'll go ahead and put some channels in. If we wanted to do this, I would just reference my uh, sheet here. So one through five on the front is gonna be channel one through five. So I'll put those in starting on the front one right here. Channel one, two, three, four, five. So I'm matching up the channel that I've assigned on my shoot site map here to the channel I've put in here. And you'll notice the cues were assigned automatically, and that's a feature of the software that does that. 
So, and then up here we've got for the back position spot six, seven, eight, and nine. Cool. So, all set. Uh, first cue out of the way. Let's go ahead and play that. Play that through. Let's get ahead a little bit to the next cue. So right there uh, where they said thunder, that's going to be our next spot that we want to put something in. And uh, we're going to zoom in a little bit here on the waveform. Select where I want to put the firework using the Alt A. I'm going to add one line item there. And I'm going to skip forward a little bit and I'm going to add another line item right there. So this is on the thunder, on the drums, right before and after they say thunder. For that, I'm thinking maybe we'll script in some mines, which is a nice quick hit. It's going to hit right with the beat of the drum. Search for red mine, put that in. I'm going to select the next one, and I'll put that red mine in. And then I'm going to go back a little bit and we'll play it and see how it looks. I think it might have been a little bit off. So I'm not sure how it's going to show for you guys, but from my screen, it looks like the second cue is hitting a little bit late. So we're going to need to make an adjustment to it. To do that, you have a few different options. You can go here and you can just edit the time. Uh, that's actually probably the simplest. Uh, so I'll, I'll take that. Maybe let's do 0 0.0 seconds. So, so that's 0 minutes, 40 seconds, and 0 hundredths of a second. Change that. And we'll play it. That's pretty close. Um, another option, what I'll do a lot of times when I'm scripting is if it's a little bit off, if I do it before I put the cues in, I might just delete it. The delete key, go exactly where I want it, maybe like right there. I'll hit Control A to add, and then hit my plus sign over here at red mine. And that's a quick way to add it in. So, uh, next thing we want to do with these two. We want to assign a position. So going back over here, I'm thinking we'll start out with these two mines, uh, front three in the center. And then if we shot them right now like this, they, we would just shoot them both straight up. It's real hard to see the difference between the two. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot one of them at negative 30 degrees and the other one at positive 30 degrees. And that'll give you a little bit more uh, distinction between the two. And even though they're only 39.23, uh, they're only five tenths of a second apart, yeah, visually, you're when you see those launch, you'll notice the difference in height as they're coming out, uh, out of the tube. So, Bam, that's one. That's the start of the song. And now you'll see uh, this same sequence we just did basically is just repeating itself over and over. And the only thing that I've changed, if you look here, is the position. So the first one shoots at F3, negative 30, positive 30. The next one shoots at F12, negative 30, positive 20, then F5. So basically what we're doing is every time they say thunder, we're kind of bouncing around the field from different positions. And that's kind of moving the audience's attention around. So you 
see right there where the lyrics come in. We're gonna we start up a couple cakes, and we're putting those on the back line, uh, back one through four. So we'll play a little bit more through. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit now. Unfortunately, we just won't have time to talk about every single uh, bit of the script, but I'm going to skip ahead to the end of this song, to the end of uh, Thunderstruck. And I'll play this little last bit for you here. Okay, so uh, there's three big drum hits that I here, I think, for the first two, it's a little bit more pronounced. I'm thinking what we'll do is uh, go back to our chart here, uh, look at something like maybe putting a fan slice in there, so Mm, seven 40 millimeter comments. That's a little bit easier than trying to wire up seven individually. So SC 300 series. Let's look at maybe golden grain comet with golden mine. And then Thinking right there, we could do maybe Silver Cascade. How about that? And let's put those on the front three, front three. And then for this last one, it's a little bit quicker. So we want to use something that's not going to last very long. And for that, one eight. Let's look at Brocade Mine. So this is something I didn't, haven't shown you guys yet. Uh, if you click on the item here, it'll bring up another window where you can make your own edits and modifications. But it also has YouTube videos here. So I'm thinking this one right here, the Super Slice Brocade Mine, that would be a really good quick hit for right at the end on that last beat. So, see how that sounds. Yeah, right there. So, I'm going to add that in. We'll put that on F3. Again, F3 is uh, that's the center of our front line. So, okay, great. That will finish up Thunderstruck. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Since you just finished that up, someone, actually more than one person, has mentioned importing libraries. Didn't know if this would be a good time to kind of mention Spears 76 catalog and how to import it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so super simple, really easy. Uh, if you want to use the catalog that I'm using now, which is I've got the full Spirit of 76 catalog imported in here, um, basically all you need to do is go to web browser go to 76proline.com and click on under display showcase go to display resources and down here you'll see a link cobra show creator library click on that that's actually a uh, it's like google drive live link so uh, there's three files in here they're all csv files uh, one of them is for Skybacon and Realtree. One of them is for 76 Proline professional use only products. The other one is for 76 Proline consumer legal products. 
And if you wanted to import one of these, all you'd have to do is right click on it, hit download. That's gonna download a file to your computer in Cobra Show Creator. In the top right, there's a little add button over here. Go to add, do bulk import. And you can choose a file. Just go to your downloads, select that file that you just downloaded, import, and it'll read all the uh, relevant data off of that file. And you can just kind of scroll through, kind of make sure everything looks okay, looks like it's good. Um, and then the last thing you do is select import here, and it'll import all those fires to your sort of my fireworks, your, your own Cobra Show Creator inventory. Um, I'm not gonna do that because I've already got it imported, but um, that's how you would do that. And Brandon, so we're we're working on some other things as far as getting more catalogs supported, but uh, so yeah, that is definitely, I think you'll see stuff in the future for that. Yeah, you can also do, if you wanna do add manually, you can add your own in here and um, you can add from Wiki Fireworks. I haven't tried that one yet, but I think a lot of people use that. Yeah, and that's a good point too, Joel, that as long, you know, if you can get the file format, and like I said, we'll be working with more manufacturers, but if you can get the file format, if you just match that spreadsheet import format, it'll, you can import it right in. <clears throat> cool, yeah. So, yeah, and man, if you have the, if you have the fireworks already in here, it'll make scripting go a lot faster. Um, I started with this one. I had all the cues assigned earlier today. I didn't have any fireworks put in and it just doesn't take very long once you have your catalog built up. So it makes it go a lot quicker. Uh, da, da, da. So, all right, so yeah, that's the end of Thunderstruck. Um, let's go on to uh, Blinding Lights. soft uh, opening. I've identified a few points here already. Uh, the first one, front one through five, um, maybe we can just start it out with some flame pots, just something soft and quiet. It's not going to make much noise. So I'm going to search for flame. We'll do assorted flames, 30 seconds, front one through five. Let's see how that looks. Okay, uh, next cue is kind of when the drums come into the song. So for that, I've got four more cues identified. We're looking at back one through four for these. And I'm thinking like a waterfall or horsetail effect something soft and quiet. We don't want to make a lot of noise because the song is real soft and quiet. So we don't want the fireworks to be too loud. Uh, uh, maybe it actually the skyline. Yeah, we can do this 25 shot silver strobe sky mines. It's kind of a Z effect. It's real slow and soft and the brakes are real quiet, they'll make a lot of noise. Put that in. Damn. Okay, great. So we got the flames, we got the sky mines. Right here, maybe just just to do some more layering. Let's do like a comic cake. Again, soft, quiet stuff, not very loud. We'll do the 130 shot gold glitter comet. And 
Right now, I'm showing that one on back one. Uh, that would not look very good, though, because we want to keep things symmetrical. So we're going to move it up to the front three. And that'll be a center position. Still comets, mines, non-breaking. Uh, so we'll do that for that one. Let's see what else we got in here. Last cue I've got identified here. Uh, this is start of the lyrics. So start of the lyrics. We're just going to start some more cakes. Uh, it's not really a good spot for single shots. Um, so let's do again sticking with the soft quiet theme. Maybe some fish cakes. Thinking red flying fish might look nice there. Uh, do need to check the positions now for that. We're going to want to do maybe back one, back two, back three, back four. My angle got off here somehow, so let me delete that. Yeah. All right, so there's kind of a started scene. So we got flame pots going into silver stroke sky mines, going into little Comet cake, Z comet cake on the ground into flying fish. So that's going to look really cool. That's going to be like a nice scene to open up this song. Play that through a little bit. I've been trying to call. I've been on my own for long enough. Maybe you can show me how to love. Maybe. I'm going to. Uh, I think I'll skip. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. A little bit more interesting part of the song. Fortunately, there isn't time to hit everything. So here's one spot. Let me go back a little bit so you can see what's happening before this. You want to do a quick poll, Joel? Just a, uh, oh, there we go. Just quick uh, poll break, Dan. Just to, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Break up yep. A little bit. <laughs> Uh, there's actually there's a spot in here where we can do the poll for the fireworks if you want to do that. Oh yeah. Oh oh oh. Oh yeah yeah we'll do that after the. Yeah yeah yeah. Fireworks effect. What would you be? You're welcome to continue on while that's running. Okay, yeah. Just for fun. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get her. Right, so if you missed it, there's a kind of a three punctuated O, 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 or A, A, A's right there. Clearly when you're gone, oh, oh, oh. And so I've already identified those as a good spot for single shots. Um, we've got the first one shooting at uh, straight up from the center position, and then two more going left and right from the center position, and then two more left and right at a steeper angle. So that's kind of like a comet sequence where we're opening up, uh, called a curtain open sequence. And then, oh, what do we got? Ooh. Salute. Salute. Nice. I like it. I really thought Go Getter would be better. <laughs> I was rooting for Fireball. Everybody likes the salutes. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So. All right, so we got that little comet sequence, and then there's a long pronounced ooh right here in the song. So that's going to be a really good point for go back to our slice and sweep chart. Probably one of these, either a fan sweep, super 
sweep or a go sweep, something that's going to last a little while, have like a nice long duration, and it can fire during that whole lyric of ooh. Bam, that brings us to the next poll, what's on it. So what do you guys think would be the best thing to go there? Uh, go sweep, uh, fan sweep, or the super sweep? And if you don't know what those do, we can do a quick video. The ghost sweep. Oh, muted. And I see two, two, two. It's the fan sweep. Multicolor. In the center out configuration. And super sweep. 164 a.m. Yeah, so there you go. Vote for which one you think is best. We'll script it in. Right now, we're just going to close it and share the results. Looks like Go Sweep. Nice. Yeah, that's my favorite too. All right, let's put that in. Sweep, green to blue to red. Okay, cool. Got it. Um, I, and I don't know if I pointed out, but um, uh, some people really try to script really heavily to the beats of the music, but don't forget about the lyrics too. Um, I think the lyrics leave a lot of opportunities for things like imagery and things like that. Um, this next one's a good example. So they're going to say blinded by the light. An effect that's very bright and visually stunning. Um, so for this, I'm thinking something like the photo flash. And maybe we'll do the, uh, maybe we'll do the sweep. Uh, so that'd be this effect where it's going to sweep across the sky with the bright white flashes. Blinded by the light. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to put that in. Um, one thing to think about too, when you're scripting the uh, slices and sweeps in here, um, don't forget about the orientation. So we can shoot these a lot of different ways. And if you're doing your show and you know how to do it, that's great. Um, but if you're like me and you forget a lot of stuff, um, after you script it in here, it's good to put notes. So in the angle field, I'm just gonna put, uh, maybe for the ghost sweep, we'll do right to left. And then for the bombard sweep, we'll do left to right. And that, and that will show up on the labels we print out later. There'll be a note for us out in the field when we're setting these up, which direction we want those to go. Is that slice, one person at Tuscan asked if the slice chart is on the 76 website? Uh, yeah, which... Um, the, like I think the one that you've been referencing. The photo flash? Or just the that the the document that you have that explains the difference. Oh, um, but, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I think it's I, it's in the catalog if you request a catalog. But um, we'll put it in the. You can get it also in the display resources. Let me see. Or uh, yeah, let me see. And if you send me a link to that, Dan, I can put that in the description of the video. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to Scott. You can put it in the description. But yeah, this is just a quick reference guide um, for the different configurations you can shoot. All right. So, all right, that's a good scene. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because uh, we are going to run out of time at some point. Example of using imagery in the song. Uh, the lyric is Don't sleep until the day. Oh, I can sleep until I feel your 
So the idea here is maybe we'll do some crossing comments uh, and we'll try to make the comments cross on touch. On the T of touch, we wanna have the comments cross and touch. How hard is that to do? Uh, maybe it might take some practice, uh, but we're gonna give it a shot and see. Uh, let's do, uh, so I'm gonna search for CM. Looking at comments, maybe I'm gonna add those in here. Twilight Glitter Comet, I think is what we're going with. And for positions, going back to my positions map, we're gonna go all the way to the left on the F1 position and all the way to the right on the F5. And just based on my experience with this shoot site and how far apart these are gonna be, I think we're gonna put them at like about a 15 degree angle. Uh, those will be about 200 feet apart. Um, and I think they'll still touch. So 100, so yeah. F, so we're gonna put one at F1, we're gonna put the other one at F5, and then we're gonna, we're gonna set the one at F1 to 15 degrees, and then we're gonna put the one at F5 to negative 15. And then I'm gonna just play it one more time, see how that sounds. It should be firing. I've added some pre-fire in already, so the, the green bar should come up about, I'm thinking about two seconds before they say the word touch. Four ten point four, and it's firing at four oh nine. So I might want to back those up just a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to select these two. I'm going to right click, and then you'll see when you have more than one item selected, you can do what's called Shift Qs. So I'm going to select Shift Qs. I'm going to back that up, maybe uh, maybe back it up about eight tenths of a second. So negative point eight. Okay, so that's going to fire a little bit earlier. I think that's about right. Um, if you want to get really OCD, which I highly recommend, uh, you can go back and play the YouTube video, listen to the music, play the video, listen to the music, play the video. I'll do that a lot when I'm scripting these shows, uh, just watching videos, playing the music, dial it in really close. So I believe that wraps it up for the second song. Yeah. Joel, you got any more of those fun polls we can do? I got you. Right. Superpower. What shoot site superpower would you like to have? Oh my God, this is my favorite one. I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the results, but I know what I would do. That's, that's about what we thought it would be. I'll share them, obviously, once it, once it closes. Yeah, yeah. It's this is a good one. I like this one. All right. Cool. All right. So last song, bam, we're cruising. But, uh, last song we got is Pirates. Aerial, uh, kind of a turbulent effect. Um, pirate song in general for this song, I think we're going to use like a lot of um, turbulence and blue color, kind of representing the ocean waves crashing against the ocean. Um, so we'll start out with that. I got no cleanup. <laughs> wow, no cleanup! Yeah. Right behind perfect weather mm -hmm. conditions. You thought that was okay. the leading answer, Joel? No, no. When we were talking beforehand, I said perfect weather conditions, <laughs> and I think several other people said no cleanup. I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I guess cleanup is a pain in the ass. I was 100% fired cues. <laughs> wow, cleanup. Right yeah. Yeah, cool. I get yeah, it. That suck. Yeah. It is a pain in the ass. <laughs> I knew it would be clean up. Because <laughs> you're older. Tony, oh. oh, that's very nice. That's true, too. <laughs> uh, 
Bam, bam. All right. Um, so yeah, pirates. Uh, we're thinking like maybe like blue, cerulean, kind of representing the ocean. Um, at the start of this song, I don't think we gotta do go too crazy. We're gonna add a lot of single shots later on, so I'm gonna put a few cakes in. I went ahead and added the obligatory Blackbeard's bounty in here, kind of a high level effect. I don't normally script based off the label, but that's uh, pretty good cake, so they are good. Uh, da, da, da. So let's see what that looks like. points in here already for single shots. I'm going to go ahead and just play this through and um, we're going to script the uh, the final sequence leading into the finale. I'll do that one together on the stream. So I'll just play it up to that so you can get an idea where we're at. We got turbulions with red go-getters. for the Nishiki Kimura over the top and some Crackling Mines. Uh, crackling Mines are going on the front three, four, and five. So the, it's basically what it is, is it's the, the right side shooting to the right and then the left side shooting to the left on an angle. <laughs> This next, next bit of mu music we just entered here, this is what's known as the bridge. So it's bridging the two movements of the song together. So for that, uh, I've just got some soft, quiet, lemon and purple go-getters. This is kind of like the calm before the storm leading up to the big finale. Uh, I think there'll be Nishiki Kimuro breaking on top of them still, but still not too loud, not too crazy. Uh, this is kind of the lead up to the, to the end of the song, into the end of the show. All right, that takes us to the finale. So I've gone through ahead of time just to save us some time and I've identified um, these hits at different, um, different points that we wanna try and punctuate with some single shot items. Uh, and I'm gonna play that, the sequence that we're gonna script, I'll play that through right here first. Here you go. Okay, so it's a, it's a single hit another single hit, and then a sequence of one, two, three, four, five in rapid succession. So I think what we'll do for the first one, I'm gonna go ahead and do two devices for the first hit. I'm gonna go back to my mind category, which is gonna be MN. And let's do, let's do the blue mines back to the ocean theme. And let's put those at front two and front four, okay? And let's just leave them going straight up, that's fine. Then for our next hit, let's play that through. Oops. Next cue. Uh, Let's do, I've only got one line item in here, but let's go ahead and add two more. So I'm using the Alt A to add more at that same position. I'm gonna select all three of those and let's do a different mine, um, something different than the blue mine, but we can do sticking with the ocean theme, we'll go back to the silver. So blue and silver. Uh, yeah, Silver Cascade Mine, that'll look good there. And then I wanna do different positions than the first time, so I'm gonna do front one, front, front one, front three, and front 
five. So between the first hit and the second hit, I'm hitting all five of my front positions. I'm just doing two first and then the remaining three on the second hit. Okay. And then for our last sequence there, let's do a comet chase. So my categories up here, I'm gonna go back to CM, comet category. That's, uh, if you're wondering what that is, I'm typing it up there. That's the prefix to the part number. So in the part number column, uh, for spirit product, we've got different prefixes for every category. So if I wanna quickly go to comets, I'll just type in CM. If I wanna quickly go to mines, I'll type in MN. And I'll show all the comments or all the mines. Pro tip, I use that a lot. Um, let's do Silver Cascade Comet. So I'm gonna select these four hits and we're gonna to go to the Silver Cascade Comet. We'll add that in. We're gonna do, let's do, say we'll start on the left at F1 and we'll go down the line, F2, F3, F4. And then let's do these at an angle. So let's do 30 degrees to the right, 30, 30, 30, 30. So that'll be a nice chase sequence of four comets going from left to right. And then what you'll notice here, if I zoom out a little bit, oops, slide back over, you'll notice that sequence that we just scripted it actually repeats one, two, three, four times. So uh, basically repeating the same thing over again, four times in a row, and that'll lead us into the end of the song. So I'll play that through and then put the finale in here and call it a day. Cool. So one thing I like here is uh, if I zoom out a little bit, I had some cakes starting earlier in the song and all those cakes are ending. I'm looking at my timeline bars here in the Shiki Kimura, Lemon Go Getters. They're all ending right about the end of this fade out, this long fade out. Um, I kind of want to put something in there to bridge that time. And then I'm thinking we want to put a little button hit right at the end of the show so people know it's over right at the end. Uh, so maybe here, why don't we just do some flame pots? I'm gonna zoom in here. We'll put, use my control A, I'm gonna add four, well, let's do five. Up here, I'm gonna search for flame. Let's do, uh, uh, maybe blue flame. Oh, don't see the blue flame. All right, we'll do red. That'll be the red would symbolize in this, I think, war, blood red ocean. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to put those on F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. And we just had an epic battle. A little calm right at the end. think right there on that last, I'm going to zoom in. There's one last string in the last note of the song right there. I'm going to use that as a, a launching point for the finale. So for that, let's do finale boxes. I'm going to search for finale. We have a lot of finale boxes. I like Time Rain Crackle. Let me add some more spots in here. Control A, one, two, three, four. And let's do the 12 shot finale box time rain crackle. Here's what that looks like. It's gonna shoot all 12 shots simultaneously. Real quick, it's like two seconds and it's done for the whole cake. So yeah, let's add four of those in. 
That'll look nice. We'll put those on the back line, B1, B2, B3, B4. And um, the only thing about the 200 gram is it doesn't go super high. So I want to add something a little bit higher altitude. Uh, for that, I'm going to look at 60 millimeter. Uh, so that'd be my TV category. TB four actually, and let's add four more of those in there. One, two, three, four. Now, obviously, you can do a lot more than this. I just want to put a few in to kind of highlight that, doing different levels. So mid level, high level. Let's do the sixty millimeter time and crackle. Bam. Put those also on the back one, back two, back three, back four. I was. Uh, running an inventory, I would probably just order a case of these and whatever was left in the case, I would shoot right there at the end, uh, but we'll just put four in for now. So yeah, that should pretty much finish it up actually. Um, Scott, Joel, is there anything else we want to touch on? Um, <clears throat> like the alternate maybe? Want to do that? So actually several people are asking questions that are slightly more like, Parabolic, for example, parabolic curves or fronts, chases, things like that. Um, okay. trying to think more advanced things we could potentially talk about. Not sure. Um, yeah. I mean, you could go back and show the, uh, I think one of the things you can mention is the use of the angle column, right? So if you did want to go, you know, you could show that one PowerPoint that we did had some of those different types of, um, you know, angles across multiple positions that showed off different types of effects. But yeah, we could do like uh, yeah, one, two, one. Just as an example here, we could do uh, one, two, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine. So parabolic curve working. You want the mountain or the valley? Actually, it's different. Uh, I call them mountains and valleys. I'll do the mountain. So that would be a two parabolas coming into a center point, almost like a like a mountain. Um, the, the last one to fire would be the. Uh, straight up so that'd be zero degrees and then from there you'd work backwards uh, from say 15 negative 15 30, negative 30, 45, negative 45, 60, negative 60. That'd be one example of that. And then obviously you have to line out your positions, but um, you could also do the 10 degree increments and that would be a little bit more precise if you have more positions. So. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, if you mix the two, then you could do the even more precise, even more positions. If you did the uh, 60, 45, 30, 15 versus 50, 67, or 50, 40, 30, 10. Um, I, I typically use the 15 degrees a lot just because we use a lot of pyrolama equipment and those are built to specific 15 degree increments, but obviously you can do uh, all kinds of different stuff depending on what kind of equipment you have um, and how you want to set it up. So if you're not familiar with what a parabolic curve is, if you simply Google parabolic curve, it'll give you tons of examples. And it's one of the spectacular things you can see like a really good pyramusical. 
So I, I know you're punching on the angles. It's just going to be difficult to visually see. You could show a video of it. Yeah. If you just yeah. Google a video of it, Dan, can you just show like a YouTube? Like if you just Google a parabolic fireworks curve or something? Yeah, I'm looking for one right now. Fireworks parabolic curve. Hmm. Actually harder than you would think to Google. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah. If you, I mean, there's like graph paper examples if you just do parabolic curve. Yeah. But the mm. whole, whole point is you're just trying to replicate that curve with fireworks, right? Right, right, right. And that's kind of what I was talking about on the slideshow of, you know, you could do simple just left to right, right to left chases or get creative and really start throwing in some fun angles in there. And if you can visually think about it, you, you know, you could easily plot something out on paper of drawing where you want things to go and translate that into a show. It's, it's, uh... Yeah, absolutely. I, I always keep a uh, sketch pad right in front of my keyboard, just a little notepad that I can kind of sketch notes on and um, I'll kind of plot out positions as I'm scripting things like, if I do a mine here, 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 and here, how many does that leave? Um, working out the, because obviously you might have a set number of positions in your script, like you might have five positions and you might want to do a chase that only has, uh, in the, the beat of the music that you're trying to hit with the, with the chase might only have three or four, it might have six. So how do you, how do you align uh, six position, six hits to five positions? And that can be kind of a, a tricky thing. Uh, sometimes you end up changing your position layout after, <laughs> after you get in scripting part way through. I've done that before. So it's kind of a, it's a process, you know, you have to go through um, revisions. It's kind of like, Anything else, uh, uh, if you, you're essentially be like writing a song or um, uh, writing a novel where you have the first draft, the second draft, you go through, clean it up. Um, that's usually my process. I'll go through, I'll, I'll put together a first draft and then I'll go through, I'll listen to it, maybe take a nap, sleep on it. I like to listen to the music in my car. I'll do that a lot. I'll work on it and then I'll drive home, listen to it in the car while I'm driving home and I'll think about something while I'm driving and it'll, it'll all start to click. So, um, yeah, but there's definitely a lot you can do and yes. this software just makes it so much easier to, um, to put, put what you have in your head down because, uh, if you're scripting from Excel, it can be a little bit, a little bit more difficult, or you're trying to script by hand, um, makes it difficult. Yeah, someone had mentioned just the space constraints, and obviously, you know, if you don't have all the space in the world to to do your show, you're gonna have to think about that when designing. So, like someone mentioned, mm -hmm. having a true uh, parabolic, you might need, for example, he said 11 positions. I've heard someone mention 13 positions to do like a true. Is it 13? You get the point though, is if you can't do that, you know, yeah. you can modify it though and still have some resemblance of a parabolic in your smaller show. I could see that, yeah. Like nine would be, nine might be the minimum, that'd be a center and four on each side. At 11 would be much better, 13 would be even better. So, um, yeah. Someone I'm looking for a video, that. YouTube video uh, in chat as an example. With a one minute yeah, start. I've got like a good one here. I think I have a video that shows it really well. I'm actually pulling this up. This is actually a cover show here, but I'm. And you know, just kind of on that topic of learning how to script, one of the best things to do is watch other people script. You know, watch YouTube videos of other people, how they script, kind of take pointers from that. You know, you go to PGI or some of the events that might be closer to you, you'll see some crazy shows and you'll learn how people do all sorts of different types of things. I've got one right here. I can share my screen and show this if this helps. Yeah, let's see it. Uh, let's make sure. Yeah, let me... Uh... 
All right, let me know once you uh, oh, yep. see this. Actually, I'm not sure if you guys can actually hear the audio. Can you, can you hear the audio to that? No. No? Let's switch over here. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I don't have the audio to this, but this is actually, um, if you see it, I think it's right about here. I'll just fast forward. Can you see my screen now? Yep. Yeah. yeah, so give it a second here. See that right there? That was kind of us right here. Just watch this one more time. Right, not yet, but right right here see that see how those are kind of parabolic but this is actually a really good show to kind of watch but anyway that was the best i could do <laughs> uh yeah i'm gonna put a uh i'll put a link in chat also to the proline display resources so um on the proline display resources page you'll find examples of probably like, I don't know, 10 or 15 different fireworks shows that we've shot um, over the last few years. And one of the nice things is you can watch that video, but then you can see all the show files behind that. So if you're curious how that script was made or what that shoot site layout looks like, you can pull up all the same files that we use to make that show um, and look at them. You can see the site layout, the video, um, all the reports and labels and different things and you can poke around inside there and maybe get some ideas. Sure. Anyway, I'll stop sharing. So cool. Do you want to, we can kind of jump to Q and a right now. Do you think Dan, or right, unless you want to listen to the whole show from start to finish, I'm not sure if that's going to, if that takes too long or um, where you go. No. that'll take a little while. Why don't we do Q and a, and if people want to stay on, I'll, um, I can re -queue my the show up if people want to watch the show from start to finish. Um, you can do that after Q&A, maybe? Yeah, no, that sounds good. All right, great. Um, 52, right, so we kind of already answered some of the parabolic. Uh, so I should not cross some parabolic comments, right? I know, I know there's a number of different ways of doing it. So yeah, if anyone wants to ask ask any uh, questions, uh, I know there there were some questions earlier, Dan, about purchasing Spirit product requirements. Um, you can maybe touch on that. I know we talked a yeah. little bit earlier. Yeah, sure. So uh, product requirements. So for purchasing, um, it does depend a little bit on where you live, whether or not we can ship to you. Um, if you want to pick up in Missouri. Uh, at our warehouse in Boonville, Missouri, you can pick up, obviously. And then state by state for shipping uh, may depend. Um, for the, the question we get a lot is the pro use items. So you'll notice on the website and the show we just scripted, a lot of those items are restricted to professional use only. And what does that mean? Well, it's not a 1-3 item. It's still a 1-4 item. But it's a 1-4 item that's uh, classified UN0431, Articles Pyrotechnics. Uh, before Spirit 76 can sell you that product, we need to verify your pyro experience, as it were, make sure you are actually a professional. And the way we do that is uh, we have an authorization form. We'll have you sign, send back to us, and we'll ask you to send something else back, like a license or a training certificate or something to just kind of show that um, you've... Uh, handled fireworks in a professional way um, before and then we're able to sell you those products. So uh, you can uh, talk to one of your sales reps at Spirit uh, or email service at 76fireworks.com and they can talk to you about all the requirements for that as well. So yeah. Just launching another poll as we answer more questions. Uh, so Ryan is the site layout part of Show Creator. It's it's not uh, yet. So that's a great uh, that's definitely in our future plans. Um, how do I script an alternate event? Um, you could you could show that Joel if you want. I mean we've got some time. Yeah. Uh, the next question was comments mine slices. Do you recommend the zero pre fire time? 
yeah, if you're using all the pro line stuff with Emacs, it's instant ignition. Uh, but I, I will make a comment on that. And we talked about this actually earlier today at noon. It's, it's always better to have comets and mines or ground type effects fire a little bit sooner because um, it's always more notice, noticeable. Well, if you had a choice between them firing too late or too soon, you typically choose too soon because you, the effect will kind of grow into the sound crescendo that you've chosen. Whereas typically if you fire something a little bit too late, it's more noticeable that your timing is off. But when you fire something a little bit too early, it's less notable that your timing is off. So, um, so you could you could use a bit of a pre-fire time or zero or just try to script it a, a smidgen early. So one second. Bring up Shoker right here to show you the alternate event script. Uh, yeah, Rick, for sure. I can. We've got some plans to make that easier, Rick. Um, but again, if, if, if you have questions or need help with specific things, you can always reach out to Cobra directly. So just because we don't have it on the webinar, that's a great suggestion to get a video. But it, if you do need help, we're always here directly. Okay, so I was going to show real quick how to create alternate events in your script. So I am now sharing my screen. This is a script I've already created. So if we wanted to, for example, let's hypothetically say, I don't have any shells in the show, but let's hypothetically say we want this effect here to not only fire in my finale, but I'm also gonna use this as an alternate event. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this queue. So I just right clicked and click duplicate. And you'll see now they have uh, channel 21, Q10 twice. So I'm gonna click on the time column and you'll see at the bottom, make alternate firing event and you can do one or two. So I'm gonna just click that, leave it as one. And when I change that, it's gonna change my time to alternate and it actually reorders it down at the bottom. So now at the bottom, you'll see I have one alternate. So at any point in time, if I fire the alternate, which I'm gonna just specify here as Q18. So if I push 18 while my show is running, it's gonna fire, what am I doing? It's gonna fire my alternate event. And again, if I don't fire that, it'll just fire at six minutes and 56 seconds in my finale. That answers. Uh, Joel, they want to know what your cursor is. It's me, actually. Um, if you look really closely, I was doing the jump man pose and jumping up in there like, you know, whatever. And one of my coworkers, uh, Ryan, when I was in the bathroom, changed my cursor to that. And I just kept it since like two years ago. Uh, two questions. I'll first you David and then John. So David, today you can't uh, import like multiple songs. It's one soundtrack, one MP3 file into Cobra today. Um, so you can't, um, you can't quite do that. But uh, you can, if, if you're a little bit more advanced, if you did have a bunch of shows, you could in theory import one show. You could shift all the cues. Didn't we go through this last time, Joel? What was the solution to that? Shifting them all. Sorry, repeat it. Sorry. Right. So technically, if you had two scripts that you wanted to combine, technically you could import one script. You could shift all the cues forward by some set period of time. You could then export that script. You could open both of them in Excel. You could combine them together, right? right. Then save that as a single file, then re-import that into Show Creator. So I know that probably right. sounded very complex, but uh, we can help you do that if that's, you know, if you had two big ass shows that you wanted to combine and you're like, there's no way I want to put those together in Show Creator, it is technically possible to do without a lot of effort. You just have to kind of know what you're doing. Um, so the, you want to answer the brand in? Yeah. Well, there's several questions regarding alternate events, so I'm just going to hit those. Someone yeah, asked on. if 18 was already occupied, what happens? So in the sense of a script running, if I fire Q18, it's going to fire an alternate event. If a script is not running and I fire 18, it's going to fire whatever channel I'm on Q18. However, specifically when a script is running, since I have 18 specified, that's when it fires an alternate. Now let's say in this case, I already have 18 for alternate one. 
I can't use it for alternate two, but I could just use another queue like 17. And again, that's only gonna fire an alternate when a script is actually running. So you wouldn't be able to, in that case, you wouldn't be able to, when a script is running, manually fire Q17 or 18 on the channel. And then I see another question, what's the limit of, where's the limit of 18 to alternate coming from? Not understanding the question on the limit. It doesn't have uh, to be the limit. Uh, yeah. It doesn't have to be the same channel. It's just simply 18 cues. Um, someone else asked what yeah. channel. Where's that? I think it's just a limitation grant. I, I can't remember why we have that limitation, but um, hopefully you don't need more than 36 alternates. Um, Yeah, so there's two other questions. So someone mentioned, isn't there an alternate button? Yes, the, on the dead man trigger specifically, there's an alternate button. So you could use this instead of the remote. Someone else asked, um, trying to see, someone was confused on why, what was that question? Someone well, had a question on the channel, I'm trying to find it. Well, you're looking up to John's question. Um, that you, yes, you can fire an individual queue while your script is running, but if you have an alternate specified, that queue that the alternate specified to will control the alternate. Correct. Uh, yep. Yeah, if I didn't answer your alternate question, just if you don't mind asking it again, because I thought there was one on, on the channel, and I don't, I don't see it. Like why, I, um, go ahead. It's okay. I think John didn't understand the response, so. No, it was someone else. That, yeah, no, I know. Well, I'll answer John. So I, I think, uh, Okay. What, what happens is if you define your alternate button as 18 and you're firing your show, oftentimes in a script, the channel's kind of bouncing back and forth, right? And since we don't have like an alternate button per se <laughs> on the 18R2, we kind of give you the ability to override one of those buttons to control the firing of the alternate. So if your show is running and you do press number 18, it will never fire Q18. It will only fire the alternate. Um, however, if you do have the dead man, you don't have to define that. You can just simply use the button on the dead man. Or if you're using the Cobra control panel, there's a button to actually fire alternate one and alternate two. So if you don't want to override Q17 and 18 because you want those available, for manual firing during your show, there's a couple of other options such as the dead man or the control panel to, to yeah. support. The control panel is actually a really good option because it keeps track of how many alternates are left. So on the 18R2, if you have, for example, 10 specified, you're gonna have to manually know that you have 10, nine, eight, so forth, so forth. The control panel keeps track of it for you. And we are doing a control panel webinar, which we will talk about that more. Someone else said my 18 or 2 doesn't have audio socket. Do you mean for you're talking about Simpty? Simpty? Yeah, that, if you're talking about Simpty, that's an upgrade kit, Tony, that you would have to email us on. Um, the 18 or 2 also doesn't just have general audio output. Um, you would require the Cobra audio box for that. Sure, John. Are you from Germany? If you are, we can ship to Germany. Uh, question on 303. Restrictions for firing multiple channels at the same time. 303 removed the restriction to fire multiple channels at the same time, so no, there is no restriction. Uh, yes, Nick, the idea of the alternate is that in some cases, if something doesn't fire appropriately during a show or what's more often is like a cake and so let's say you had a 45 second cake to fill a certain section of your song and that cake due to the fusing internally just ends early and you're sitting there with like 20 or 30 seconds of black sky. The idea of the alternate is you can fill that black sky where there's an inadvertent um, pause in fireworks is the, 
is the primary goal. And we have two different types of alternates. So sometimes people may have like alternate one, could have a couple of longer cakes, right? So maybe two or three cakes that you can use for filler. And then maybe alternate two has something like shells or cake slices or something that has a more immediate shorter term effect. And then you can also program those alternate events to occur later in your show. So if you want those as part of your finale, then those will fire during your finale if you don't fire them sooner so that you don't have live product remaining after the show. Yeah, Brian asked if you do not have alternates assigned to a button, for example, 18, or anything else. So the other settings we have, like disable firing um, or dead man, if so, if, if nothing is assigned to that button and you push it while script is firing, it's going to fire Q18 on whatever channel the remote's currently on. Uh, that's correct, Jared. When you pause the show and you have an audio box, it will pause the audio and the show. And if you press it again, that will resume both, keeping everything in synchronization. Uh, it's, it's John, it's the, however you define them in your script. So when you're defining your alternates within your script, it will do them sequentially, right? So if you've got four alternates and they're defined in a specific order, uh, it always fires the first alternate, then the second, then the third, then the fourth. So it's however, whatever sequence you define them, define them in. Sometimes I've heard the, the folks that are using the alternates will sometimes use like alternate one for shells and alternate two for cakes if they have a couple cakes in case there's a bigger dead space. Yeah. Where were you, Chris? Three oh, I'm here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just mentioned that. That's okay. Uh, but you can see the alternates as Joel's got them defined at the end. He's got two of them. So in that case, the first one that would fire is twenty, you know, channel twenty one Q ten followed by channel twenty one Q nine. Thanks, guys. So uh, right. So we're obviously doing some Q and A. If if you guys want to hop off, that's that's fine. Thank you everyone so much for attending. Uh, we absolutely. Uh, thank Dan for taking his valuable time and uh, hanging out with us tonight and, and doing some scripting. Hopefully we all had some good fun. So thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. From us at Cobra and, um, and, and everybody else. And thank you everyone for attending.